Greenhouse warming theory is rapidly becoming the most expensive mistake ever made in the history of science. Video 2. The globe has warmed one degree Celsius since 1975. Most people agree that the world around them, on average, feels warmer now than it did several decades ago, that glaciers are melting, and that sea level is rising. Scientists from three government agencies, NASA, NOAA, and the United Kingdom Met Office, have analyzed all available air temperature data measured worldwide from just above the land surface and from just above or below the sea surface. They calculate changes in monthly and annual average global temperatures. Each group used slightly different techniques for filtering and averaging data collected at numerous stations in some areas and very few stations in most areas. This map shows the regional increases in temperatures from around 1910 to 2000. Warming was primarily greatest in northern regions. A fourth group of scientists at Berkeley Earth was skeptical of these three analyses and developed yet another method for analyzing and summarizing more than 1.6 billion temperature measurements from 39,000 temperature stations worldwide. This graph shows the average of the annual average values for these four analyses from 1945 through 2018. All four groups, despite using different methods, agree quite precisely that annual average global temperature changed very little from 1945 to 1975, warmed approximately 0.6 degrees Celsius from 1975 to 1998, changed very little from 2001 through 2013, and then suddenly warmed an additional 0.3 degrees from 2013 to 2016, making 2016 the hottest year on record, followed by cooling of nearly 0.2 degrees Celsius by 2018. The rate of warming from 1975 to 1998 was about 0.26 degrees per decade, and the temperatures reached by 1998 have continued. The rate of warming from 2014 through 2016 was more than three times faster but the higher temperatures have only lasted a few years. Meanwhile, concentrations of carbon dioxide shown by the purple dashed line and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere continue to rise at ever-increasing rates, showing no direct relationship to the sudden changes in temperature trends clearly observed around 1975, 1998, and 2014, and to decreasing temperatures since 2016. Furthermore, greenhouse gases are typically well mixed throughout the atmosphere, so that their effects are expected to be similar at all latitudes and during all seasons. Normally, the greatest heating of Earth's surface is observed to be in the tropics. This heat is thought to be convected poleward year-round in air currents, ocean currents, and storm systems. The greatest increases in global temperatures, however, are clearly observed to occur in polar regions during winter-spring, a phenomenon known as polar amplification. Minimum temperatures on the Antarctic Peninsula near 65 degrees south rose 6.7 degrees Celsius from 1951 to 2003, more than 10 times world average warming. Based on ice core data, this was the greatest warming known in this region in more than 1,800 years. Maximum temperatures on the Antarctic Peninsula during summer months, on the other hand, changed very little during the same years since 1951. Similarly, annual mean land surface temperatures in the Arctic, north of 60 degrees, increased 1.5 degrees Celsius between 1966 and 2003, more than twice mean global warming. This was the greatest warming observed in the Arctic region for at least the past 600 years. Greenhouse warming theory cannot explain directly why warming is observed to be greatest in polar regions during winter-spring. Explanations with considerable arm-waving tend to invoke the complexity of climate systems and a variety of postulated climate feedback mechanisms. The most direct, straightforward explanation for polar amplification is depletion of the ozone layer, to be described in the next video. Thank you.